Okay, this sermon is entitled, The Saved Understand God's Word. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 90 reads, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations, before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth, and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God, thou turnest men to destruction, and sayest, Return ye children of men. Now, the Bible makes it very clear that once a person is saved, they possess the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is our teacher. And therefore, if a person is saved, he has a perfect teacher, and that's why the saved you know, have an understanding of God's word that the unsaved do not. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm making an exception here. There are people out there that are saved and do not read the Bible, and they've been totally deceived by Satan, and it's a sad thing, and they may not quite understand everything you know, as clearly or cogently as they should, and I believe eventually, if they were to get back into the Word of God, they would they will get this understanding, you know. But when it comes to certain things about about salvation, for instance, I believe that every saved person pretty much understands, you know, salvation and should understand it. And we should grow in our our understanding of it. But when it comes to like being totally wrong about salvation or being totally wrong about God's Word and just totally not understanding the grace of God. I believe that's a result of a person not being saved. And I'm going to get into some reasons why. Now let's go into a few verses that make it very clear that unsaved people cannot understand God's word. And then I'm going to prove that those that are saved have the Holy Spirit telling us the truth. Let's start off with 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. And let's take a look at a couple verses here. Let's start off with verse 12. And it reads, it says, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Now, the Apostle Paul is addressing believers here, and he is saying basically that there are two types of spirits. There's the Spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit, and then there's the Spirit of the world. Okay, verse 13 reads, Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Now, he's saying right here that, you know, the way man teaches things is totally contrary to the way God teaches. Okay, now verse 14 makes it very clear. But the natural man, now, when he says the natural man, he's referring to the unsaved. See, those that are saved have been brought to life by the Holy Spirit. We have, we have rebirth. We have eternal life. We have, of course, you know, our natural bodies, but the natural man only has that. And that's why he only has a natural understanding of things. And it goes on to say, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Now, this does not say that the natural man cannot, you know, cannot hear or understand what is being said, the natural man just perceives it all as completely wrong, or in this case, as absurd or foolish. That's why when you start talking to, you know, somebody that's lost, and you go over the concept of, um, you know, grace, and they think there's no way God's grace would would allow you to just do anything you want and still go to heaven, and they don't understand it. It's, it's it doesn't make sense to them, or the concept of once saved, always saved. You know, just you could just live any way you want to and still go to heaven. And of course they're forgetting that you'll be chastised and you'll be, you know, have, you'll be cursed by God if you live any way you want to and you will have lots of problems in this life and you'll perhaps will even, you know, shorten your your longevity here. But they don't even factor any of that in. They just think it's absurd. This concept's absurd. Well, to the natural man it is absurd because this is a spiritual concept. Salvation by grace. Once saved, always saved. Eternal security. They are spiritual concepts. They're not physical concepts. That's why the natural man does not believe these. They, be, they, they are perceived as foolishness. And also, you could be dealing with the atheist out there who thinks the concept of an almighty God is just you know, crazy. And the concept of burning in hell forever is crazy. It's just, it's just too grandiose. Or it's just too, it's just too you know, uh, bizarre or whatever. Well, that's because they're nat- they're natural people. They don't have the Holy Spirit inside them. Now, let's take a look at some verses that make it clear that once a person is saved, 
They get the Holy Spirit immediately. Okay, we see this in John chapter 7. It says, He that believeth on me, verse 38, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow you know, river, you know, rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit. Now notice it's capital S, denoting the Holy Spirit. Okay, a.k.a. the Holy Ghost. It says, which they that believe on him, that would be Christ, should receive. Okay, for the Holy Ghost was not yet, excuse me, was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. But it says, those that believe on Christ receive the Holy Ghost. Now, it's, it's not something that happens subsequent to belief. It happens simultaneously with, with, with belief on Christ. And because we have the Holy Spirit inside of us, we, we can understand God's Word. That's the only way we can understand it. And this is the only reason why the unsaved does not understand God's Word. Like these unsaved Calvinists out there, they say, well, I believe Jesus only died for his own. Well, you didn't get that from the Holy Spirit, because it's not in the Bible. You, you got it from some man-made teaching that just seems to, you know, it seems to, to fit, and it seems to be very condign with, you know, the unregenerate mind. It just, they don't believe that God really loves everyone. They don't believe Jesus died for everyone. That sounds like something the unregenerate would come up with, and they did come up with it. And that's why they believe this stupidity. It's because it's not the truth. Okay, now, if you go on to the next verse here, it says, Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said, Of a truth, this is the prophet. See, anytime the Holy Spirit is revealing something to you, it's the truth. When God's prophets and preachers are preaching his word in truth, you're going to get the truth. So, that's why these people that believe all these false things, it's never true. They just get it. They just believe every lie under the sun. Calvinists, not only them, but Arminians, they believe you can lose your salvation. Well, you didn't get that from the truth of God's word. In fact, that's the exact opposite of what the Bible teaches. The Bible says in John 10, 28, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Now, anyone who has the Holy Spirit inside them knows that means once saved, always saved. I give unto them eternal life, once saved, and they shall never perish, always saved. How do you get anything but that from those scriptures? You don't, unless you're unregenerate. The unregenerate believes anything. Okay, the next crowd that's not saved, Lordship Salvation people, they're not in the truth, they're not saved, so what do they believe? I believe there's more to it than Christ dying on the cross. They say stuff like, it's not, that, it's not enough that Christ died, you've got to make him Lord of your life. Now, they may not say that, but that's implicit in what they believe, and that's exactly what they believe. That Christ dying is not enough, and you better, you better do something. And of course you're going to have to do something if Christ isn't enough. That's the only you know, natural corollary. If, there is, if Christ is not enough, if he's not sufficient as our Savior, then of course you're going to have to do something. And they tell you you've got to repent of your sins and, and live a good life and be holy. These false prophets, they say you have to have personal holiness to go to heaven. And they're going to drop into hell because no holiness that we can manufacture is enough. When Jesus Christ is enough and the saved people have trusted in him alone. And that's why we know Jesus paid it all. That's why we know there's no repenting of sins involved in salvation. It's faith alone. It's believe alone on Christ alone. Okay? We know this because we are saved. We have the Holy Spirit inside of us. Now, let's take a look at some verses that prove that the Holy Spirit is behind any Christian's understanding. Turn to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. It says in verse 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So that's who's teaching us, the believer, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit teaches us correctly. Okay, Some other worldly spirit tells these unbelievers that Jesus didn't die for everyone and that you can lose your salvation and that you got you got to do more than believe and you got to repent of your sins. That's all from some other spirit. That's all from Satan. But we as believers don't fall for that stuff because we're not going to fall for it. Turn over to John chapter 16. John chapter 16. Look at verse 13. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will shew you things to come. So the Holy Spirit does not lie to people. 
The Holy Spirit tells the truth only because it's the Holy Spirit. If, if the Holy Spirit lied, it wouldn't be the Holy Spirit. It'd be the unholy spirit. So that's why believers in Christ, we have an understanding about who God is. We have an understanding about salvation. We should have an understanding about all these things. But that's why we have to grow. Because we don't get the, we don't necessarily get the understanding perfectly right away. Now, on certain things, like for instance, salvation. When that when it comes down to that, you should understand it, you know, pretty clear. You should be very clear on it. But I understand that you know we, we still need to grow. My point is, we're only going to be growing in the truth. We're not going to be growing in some, you know, ebb and ebb and flow manner where, well, one minute we believe wrong, the next minute we believe right, and then it's wrong, right, back and forth like a ping pong game. No, we should be growing in the truth. And we should just be gaining more knowledge of the truth as we grow. Now, let's take a look at a few more verses that make this clear that the, the saved can understand God's word. Turn over to John chapter 10. In John 10, we see in verse 14, I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. That's one of the reasons why we understand God's word, is because we are his sheep. And he is our shepherd. It goes on to say in verse 26. Now, in verse 26, he's dealing with people that do not believe. And then he's explaining why, you know, believers do do understand his word. It says in verse 26, But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. The word follow means they, okay, or excuse me, the word follow has to do with trusting Christ. It's a one-time thing. It's not a continual, you know, following. But the word know there means recognize. Okay, we recognize God's word. That's why when a person who is saved, they hear a false message, it should dawn on them right away. Red flag. This is not true. This is garbage. Okay? The first time I ever heard about losing salvation, you know, I mean, I had been saved for a long time, and then somebody said something about losing salvation. The first time I heard it, it didn't take me more than a second to realize that was garbage, that was demonic, that was wicked, that was lies, and I, and I knew it right away. Because I'm not going to fall for that stuff. Anyone who's saved is not going to fall for that. Okay? So it tells us right there, because we're his sheep, we recognize his voice. We recognize the voice of God, the voice of Christ, the shepherd. Now turn over to John 14. John 14. Now we see another verse that makes this clear. Let's start off with verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also, and whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Now he's saying two things here. Now the word know there means understand. It says basically, and whither I go ye understand. You understand where I'm going, it's to heaven. And then it also goes on to say, and the way ye know. So you know the way to heaven. Okay? No no saved person is going to be should be confused about how to get to heaven. You know, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Now I'm not saying everyone is not confused because the devil can confuse people, but you should come back to this understanding. It should be very clear. You know, oh yeah, believe on Christ and I'm saved forever. It's not complicated. So he's saying that believers they know they know where he's going, and they know the way. And then he goes on to say, he's telling you the way in verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. So the Bible makes it very clear that because we have the Holy Spirit inside of us, and the Holy Spirit will be, will be inside of us forever, we should be continually getting the truth. And, you know, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Now, let's, let's go to one more verse on this. Now, once again, there are people that are mixed up. There are people that stop reading the Bible. That's one way to get confused. If you stop reading the Bible, you'll get confused. But that's why we are called to read it all the time. The more you read it, the better understanding you'll have. So I, there are exceptions to this, but I'm just saying for the most part that if you are saved, you are not going to be falling for a bunch of garbage. Okay, You're not going to fall for Calvinism. It, will not, it, won't, it won't even make any sense. Okay, and even if it does make sense, you're still not going to fall for it. You know, that, that God only, you know, loves certain people. Uh-uh. You know, John 3.16 tells you he loves the whole world. Okay, you're not going to fall for Arminianism. Okay, the people that fall for this stuff are unsaved. That's the whole point. 
The devil has come up with a counterfeit way of salvation for the unsaved. The whole reason behind this is to keep them lost. That's what the devil wants, to keep people lost. He's trying to take as many people to hell as he possibly can, and of course he came up with these false systems. Okay? Lordship salvation. Okay? It, it gets people to not trust Christ alone. When Christ is the only one that we can trust, because he's the only one that died for our sins at the cross, that actually can save us. So if you if the devil can get people believing, you know, to you know that they need to add something to that to keep them from believing on Christ, then he'll do it. He's done it. You know, how many people out there are on their way to hell right now because they because they are trying really really hard to repent of all their sins and and they they've convinced themselves that they, that they have and yet they don't believe that anyone who simply believes on Jesus has everlasting life like the Bible says and yet they they're going to they're going to add works to it and then on the final day they're going to stand in front of you know Jesus on judgment day and say lord lord have we not prophesied in your name lord lord have i not repented of all my sins lord lord have i not condemned all these sinners when they were really saved and i wasn't i mean of course these people are going are, are are lost but they've bought into a false gospel you don't add anything to what God has done. It says in Ecclesiastes, Whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. And then it goes on to say, Nothing can be added to it. Nothing can be you know, subtracted from it. And of course, I'm paraphrasing, but you can't add or subtract from what God has done. You have to accept what he has done by faith, alone, when it comes to salvation. Now, let's take a look at one more verse on, on this subject of understanding. Or actually, let's look at a couple more verses. Because I want people to understand that the reason why people are so off is because they're probably lost. And I can say probably. Because, you know, we don't want to take any chances by saying, well, don't worry, they're saved too. They, they believe in Jesus. Yeah, another Jesus. I mean, come on. Believing in Calvinism is another Jesus. It's not the real Jesus of the Bible. Because the, the Bible defines who the real Jesus is in, in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 10. And it, it totally refutes Calvinism in its, in its definition of who the real Jesus is. He's the Savior of all men, especially them that believe. That's free grace. That's, you know, he died for everybody. Okay? Calvinism doesn't believe that. So, he, so they, their Savior is another Jesus. So it doesn't matter if they claim they believe in Jesus or not. There is another Jesus out there, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And there's another gospel out there, according to Galatians chapter 1. And I believe these people that are in these isms believe another gospel. Okay? Jesus died for... He, he died for some people. And then you got to persevere to the end to prove you're saved. Because he couldn't really save you. That's another gospel. Okay? Jesus... He, he, he died for your sins, but you can lose your salvation. That's another gospel. That's not good news. The gospel is good news. The Bible defines it as, you know, glad tidings of great joy. If you could lose your salvation, that would be sad tidings of, I mean, some type of a depressed, lugubrious, you know, forlorn, you know, sorrow or something. Come on, there would be nothing good about that. Losing salvation is not good news. Being saved today and lost a week from now is not good news. Good news is that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Good news is being saved forever and going to heaven no matter what. That's good news. The only good news in the Bible is eternal security. Because that's what that's a result of believing on the gospel believing the gospel. Is you're going to heaven forever. Okay? He died for all your sins. There's no more sins left to condemn you. So the good news is what Jesus actually accomplished. He died, was buried, and rose again. And because of that, we have eternal life as a gift that can never be lost. That's the only good news there is. So you have to understand that these people believe all this garbage. It's because they're not, they're not saved. And that's probably, the, that's probably the case. But we see in, um, let's see, the verse I want to look at, I believe is in the first uh, uh, Timothy. It talks about, actually in second Timothy, it talks about God giving us an understanding. Now, you know God did not give these people an understanding if they're totally confused. And we also know that God is not the author of confusion. So in 1 Timothy chapter 1, actually in chapter 2, it says in verse 7, it says in verse 
okay, verse 7, it reads, Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding. Now look at this. Understanding in all things. Now don't tell me. Now salvation is the most important thing there is. Don't tell me he's going to give you no understanding about salvation. But yeah, you can, be, you can be right on other things. You can be right about prayer. Be right about prophecy. Be right about eschatology. Be right about um, ecclesiology or something. Why would God give you understanding in that stuff and not even in salvation? No, he gives you understanding in all things. That means you understand eternal security. You understand salvation by grace through faith alone in Christ alone. You understand that Jesus died for everybody. Why do you understand these things? Because God himself gave you the understanding. That's what the Bible teaches. And of course, this is written to believers only. Okay, First Timothy and all the epistles of Paul were written to believers to help them grow. Now, let's turn over to one more verse. Turn over to, to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. Now, this, this is a very important doctrine because we need to understand that you know, there are so many people out there and that do not understand God's word. It's because they don't have any truth in them. And that's why they're wrong about everything. Let me give you an example of a few things that the, the unsaved people think. And I've already covered, you know, Calvinism, Arminianism, and lordship. But they'll say stuff like, well, salvation's free. And they're just agreeing with it because the Bible says it. They don't really believe it. Because they, they'll say in the next breath, it'll cost you your life. Now that is something that makes, that made no sense. How could you sit there and think salvation was free and then it'll cost you your life? That doesn't make any sense at all. It's a contradictory statement. If something costs you something, it's not free. So that's one example of how these people are so off. They just don't get, you know, they don't understand what free means. Okay, so we've got to watch out for people that have this, this little of understanding of the Scripture. It tells you that there's something wrong with them spiritually. Okay, and of course, adding works or something, or, or for instance, you know, we're not saved by, by works, but if you're truly saved, you will have the works. Now, what you've just said is, we're not saved by works, but we are saved by works. My question is, why do you have to have the one thing that doesn't save you? You don't. See, this is something that the unregenerate mind has come up with. Okay, we're saved by faith alone, but true faith is never alone. I'm going to tell you right now, whoever came up with that was not saved. Because how can you be saved by faith alone if it's never alone? The only way you can be saved by faith alone is if it's always alone. Okay, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. It's the one who's not working, not the one who insists that there has to be works, if it's real faith. That's a bunch of garbage. And that just ex this explains why these people think this way, because they have no truth in them. And that's why basic, th basic examples of logic you know, do not make sense to these people. And we see the reason why in 1 John 5.20, this is to believers, and we know that the Son of God has come and hath given us, believers, an understanding. Okay? that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. So this is true of believers. God himself gives us an understanding, and then God also blinds the unbeliever. They have no understanding of, about Scripture. <coughs> So let's take a look at a couple more verses in Romans chapter 11. Big difference between believers and unbelievers. And like I've said, there's a chance somebody that's, that is saved is a little mixed up on something, but it's a, bad, it's, a, it's a sad thing, and they need to get back into the truth and let the truth set them free. Okay, verse 7, What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Those that are saved, we get... The Holy Spirit is our teacher, and we get a perfect understanding of the Scriptures because God himself is perfect, and he gives us the understanding. Those that are not saved, they're considered the rest. Okay? They're the others. Okay? The rest were blinded. So Calvinism, Arminianism, and Lordship Salvation, it's a result of spiritual blindness. 
free grace theology, understanding that Jesus died for everyone equally, and that salvation is a free gift, and it's believe only on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and then you're eternally secure, once saved, always saved. That's a true revelation from God himself that all believers understand, or should understand, and any other teaching out there that's contrary to it is a result of spiritual blindness. Because those that are saved, we get an understanding from God. The Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. Those that are not saved, the rest were blinded. They're, they're in that category of the rest, the others, the lost, whatever you want to call them. So that's why this is so important to understand is because only the saved get a clear understanding about, about salvation and about God's word. And everyone else who's not saved, they're just the natural man and everything about God's word to them is foolishness. So that's all I have. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says on this very important subject. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.